Ladles and Jelly Spoons, I'm Ariel Wickland, and welcome to my second vlog where I am going to be working on my island map for the project we're calling Bookmon for now. And I was going to do this really cool thing where I would have both me and the map on the screen, but um, <laughs> as always, it seems with me I run into some technical problems. So, instead of doing that, I'm going to have to flip this camera around so you can see my screen in order to see what I'm doing, which means you will not be able to see my face. But that's okay, because that's not the point of this vlog. The point of this vlog is to see how my world develops as I work on it. So, let's begin. Oh, actually first, if any of you came over here looking for world building tips or anything like that this is probably not the video for you I'll link some stuff down in the description below where I found resources that were useful this is more of a series of watching a world develop uh, my world bookmon so if you're interested in watching someone go through the process and see what they keep in see what they exclude etc you might like this series if not go check out the links below because they'll probably help you out a bit more this is inkarnet.com. I really hope I'm pronouncing it right because that's how I've been saying it this entire time. So when you're creating a world, you need to start with some kind of idea or premise. And I explained in my previous video what all I'm doing and what I'm thinking of blending together in order to create this world of Bookmon. So go check that out if you want a refresher. Uh, otherwise, starting from that point, I figured I should start with a little island, which is a proof of concept of my world, and if you're one of those people like me that is just overwhelmed with all the possible data and information you can put into a world, start with an island. Just start with an island. Start with whatever races, ethnicities, etc., societies you want, your core ones, on this island. It'll help make the colossal project seem a bit more manageable. At least that's what happened in my case. So, over here, we have something called the City of Rings. And this city was inspired by Attack on Titan, although it's a lot more technologically advanced, and there aren't giants running around necessarily. Um, at the moment, I'm having this island being inhabited by magical monsters that Outside the world, people may call Bookmon. Inside the world, I'm not really sure what they're going to call them yet. They may just call them animals, because they're that common. They help support the whole ecosystem of the world and everything. Um, but that's really what I started out with, is the City of Rings. I knew that I wanted this city to be technologically advanced. I knew that I wanted the higher-ups in the city, or the people in power, to be trying to keep people inside the walls and trying to control them and ultimately trying to suppress their knowledge of anything outside the walls, especially magical monsters. I decided that the reason is because there was some sort of great divide, whether that be a war or just some giant conflict between monsters and humans, something of that nature. I will expand upon that as I develop the world. And something that I was told that should be considered very seriously when world building is your setting should be a character, okay? So it can't just be a, like, like right here, okay? This can't just be a place with trees. A place with trees is boring. A place with trees is not memorable. A place with trees doesn't have a purpose, really, except to be a place with trees. So we need to give all of this meaning. And I do actually have an idea of why this island formed and how its history and lore. I'm not going to go into that though because I have ideas of what I'm going to do with information distribution in the future. I want people in the, in the story to talk about their theories as to why this island was made. 
and then the audience can figure out for themselves why it was made rather than sitting here and telling you why but you can look at um, I think Lord of the Rings would have some good examples as to setting I mean one of the most popular posters of the time when Lord of the Rings came out was not a Frodo or anything like that it was of the map because the map itself the land, the setting, was a character in the story. And being a character, your setting does need to develop over time. So think about that. Make sure that you have room for your setting to grow. And we got over here right now something called the Abandoned Village. I'm not entirely sure what this is yet. I have a feeling that this is going to be connected to the City of Rings as like maybe the abandoned village was full of farmers and people of that nature and the abandoned village became abandoned because of this settlement which for right now I'm calling the striped hyena settlement I think there's going to be monster humanoids inhabiting this world that have a much more closer connection to the magical beasts and animals of the world but like I said, this is all in development. Everything's probably going to change over time. But at least I have something going on here where there is um, economics, trade. That's something to really consider too when you're building a world. Where are people getting their goods from? Um, how, how do they survive? How are they interacting with the world outside? I mean, the City of Rings, I think I figured out, can be pretty self-sustainable. The City of Rings has the technology to create, to use reverse osmosis in order to get salt out of water and separate the two. And by doing that, they're able to do a whole bunch of other things like hydroponic farming, which is something we're actually developing now in our time, making it more and more effective versus using regular agricultural farming with soil. So I'm taking some inspiration from that in order to make my City of Rings a bit more believable. Um, down here right now, I have something called the Marshland Village. I've been noticing in anime that lizard men seem to be becoming more and more popular. They're, they're background people, but they're more and more popular, sprouting up a little bit here and there. So I'm thinking of incorporating that into my world as well. Here I have a nomad farmer settlement, which I have to somehow connect with the City of Rings. Um, the mountains here would make it very difficult for trade, although maybe there's a slight path in here. We'll see as we develop the world how we want to tackle that. But the nomad farmers need to have a history, because these are humans. These are the only two human settlements on this island. And we need to figure out how these nomad farmers got here. They probably escaped the City of Rings in order to get there. And then we also need to figure out how everybody got on the island. I have a couple of ideas with my uh, monster humanoids, but again, because of how I want to tell the story of the island, I'm not going to really explain why they're here or how they got here. Just that they are here specifically for this island and why the island was made. And these humans probably escaped here after a great war conflict, which right now I'm just titling the Great Divide. So as you can see, I got a lot of history already going on just from ideas, although everything is still in development. With this island, I also have beach front all around it for now. I got the mountains going in through here and through here but I've decided along the mountains I wanted to have like a desert or barren place something some kind of geographical uh, formation that would help protect this mystery tower and I've literally called it mystery tower because I don't know what it is yet I know it's gonna be an end goal for a protagonist if not several protagonists of the City of Rings to try and get to, or that they end up finding out about along the way. I'm just not sure specifically what it is. 
And I also found out something called like the like fog deserts. Those are super cool. I need to look more into them. But they're pretty much deserts that are foggy all the time. Like they can't really bear any life because the water, the moisture doesn't really get into the soil. So it's just a barren land of fog. And I thought that'd be a really cool kind of environment to bring into my world and to play around with and see how it works. So that's how my world is right now. However, I'm going to do a little bit something more to it because like I said, I want my setting to be a character. So I wanted to add a couple more things just to make it look a little different than other islands and make it have a different kind of look and feel to it. So I decided the other day when I was looking at my map that I wanted to look like something and I wanted to give it a little bit more character by giving it something unique. And I decided what might be a cool thing is if this was a sandbar on either side, but the sandbar was known as the sinkable sandbar. Like it's pretty much a tar pit made out of sand in the water. It looks very delicate when you try and go up to it. It's almost sturdy enough to walk on, but if you try, you sink into it and just fall into the ocean. And we're going to title that real quick. Use this. We're going to title this Sinkable Sandbar. And, you know, because I got these lizard men over here in the Marshland Village, I think they're going to have something to do with this sinkable sandbar. Like, I think what would be good for them is if they figured out resources in this sandbar that they can use, that no one else has figured out yet how to use. What that is yet, I'm not sure. I have to do a little bit more research. Boop. This is the southern sinkable sandbar. And then we're going to put one up here and call it the northern sinkable sandbar. So this is my concept island right now. This is what it's going to look like in the meantime. Um, like I said, I really need to figure out more about these villages dotting the landscape. I think once I know more about those, I'll be able to figure out what to do with Mystery Tower. And that's the end of my introduction to my island. So that's an introduction to my island. I started out with the premise idea, which I explained in my first video. And then I decided what human society would look like in a world inhabited full of magical monsters. Like I know in Pokemon they have magical monsters, but have you read some of their Pokedexes? Like seriously, have you read them? Oh my god! I mean Houndoom, first of all, supposedly if you ever get burned by a Houndoom, you will feel its fire forever. But where? I haven't read the mangas, maybe that's where they input that information, but I don't, I don't see that being played out in the video games, I don't see consequences of that, I don't see the consequences of that in the anime ever, or like can Gardevoir make black holes and Alakazam it just has like the biggest brain out of any of the Pokemon or something ridiculous like that? So in this world I want to account for those things, like if I have magical monsters that are actually like nuclear walking bombs, I would like to treat them as such and have consequences for their existence along with, I mean, your whole world would change if you had a dog that could just blow up your house right outside, wouldn't it? So that was the idea I was going with for Bookmon. How far I go into that, I'm not sure, it depends. But I started with my premise, then the human civilization, and I'm going to expand it from there. I think next what I have to do is figure out these monster humanoids and their relationship with the actual monster creatures because they have such a, a tighter bond 
that they would be very homogenous together. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Is it homogenous? They, they would just work so well together and be so closely knit that whatever one does, I think, would affect the other. And then after I figure that out, I can go back to the human civilization and figure out, okay, what kind of monsters are circling around the city? Does it impact the walls of the city? I'm sure probably it does. And things of that nature. So, thanks for watching my update on my map. I will be doing some other things here in the future with my world building. What exactly those are? I'm not sure yet. I got ideas, I just don't know how to present them well enough on YouTube. I'm going to do it anyways because I'm just documenting my stuff. It's just, it'd be nice if I could, you know, not use a camera, it's just not use the camera to actually video record my TV. It'd be nice to actually just have it on my software that I'm using, but we'll see what we can do. Hey, Los Angeles Spoons, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a good day. And uh, expect more information soon about Bookmon. Bye!